Okay, I'd like to talk about chapter 25, section 4. I'm going to introduce the amphibians, uh, talk a little bit about their characteristics, and then talk about the three uh, orders of living amphibians. All right, so uh, general characteristics or features. So this is going to be the first group that we see that has, that is, uh, shows some adaptations to terrestrial existence. Um, so it spends the most of uh, life on land, but returns to water to breed or reproduce. The term uh, amphibian is from a Greek word, uh, amphibios, and literally means uh, double life. So that means that uh, we've got a life on land and a life uh, in the water. Okay, second characteristic uh, that I'd like to talk about is the life cycle. And I'm going to use this illustration. So this is uh, point number two, uh, life cycle. And in the amphibians, what we're going to see um, is that, as I mentioned, the adult's going to uh, be living on land, but when it reproduces, uh, it's going to go to water. And so the eggs uh, are laid in water and the sperm also, uh, and then the sperm, once at least some sperm will fertilize eggs and will have at least one zygote. Uh, one fertilized egg, and that zygote will undergo um, development, as we mentioned, uh, blastula, gastrula stages, to form a larval stage. Uh, if this were a frog, we would call that larval stage a tadpole. It is an aquatic um, stage. Uh, so the tadpole will then mature and it will go through a fairly dramatic change in body form uh, that's called a metamorphosis. And we saw this with the insects. Um, we see this with the amphibians also. So larva to the adult, a lot of special hormones involved. Uh, in that change, and again, that's called metamorphosis. Oh, another uh, point here that we also may want to talk about the insects and uh, the metamorphosis that they undergo, the larva and the adult actually have completely different um, feeding habits. Uh, the larva will be um, more of a plant eater uh, in the case of the amphibians, whereas the adults are more um, insectivores. They're going to be eating uh, insects primarily. Okay, a third um, feature is the, has to do with the circulatory system. We now have a three-chambered heart. So there are two atria, one ventricle, and this, the circulation now is actually a, um, we'll call it a double circuit system, in that the blood, um, once it goes to the lungs or to the skin, um, which acts as a uh, respiratory organ in some amphibians, um, it's going to pick up oxygen. It's then going to 
actually return to the heart. And then uh, the uh, pressure will be increased so that uh, it now can move to the body, the organs of the body, uh, more effectively. Um, so it's a higher pressure system and a more efficient system. And if I could erase this. So we have, like I said, two chamber heart, I'm sorry, three chambers, two atria. Um, and so here we have uh, body organs. And here we have the lung and skin. So these are areas where the blood is going to uh, pick up um, oxygen. So we have one circuit and we have a second circuit. So one circuit going to the lungs. Now oxygen blood returns to the heart um, and then the heart through its contractions increases the pressure of that blood and therefore sends uh, that blood to the body organs. Okay, one last characteristic, which I've already alluded to here, um, has to do with respiration. And so number four, Amphibians tend to use a combination of organs, the skin, um, we call it cutaneous respiration, uh, serves as a respiratory organ, and the presence of small lungs um, in the body. Okay, let's take a look at the different groups within the amphibians. I'll talk about them briefly. We've already had a look at uh, one group, and that was the frogs. So there are approximately 5,000 species of living amphibians. Approximately 300 to 350 million years ago, there was a quite a large number of different amphibian species. Um, however, they became extinct, all but a few. So at present, we have only really three groups, so three modern groups. And these are, so these are actually orders. Uh, so the first one is probably the one you're most familiar with. Uh, the order Anura, and so these are the frogs and toads. The second group, Erodula, are the salamanders and newts. And lastly, a group that you're probably not at all familiar with, are the Sicilians. And these um, lack legs and they're mostly blind. They're um, kind of worm-like, shaped anyway, and they mostly burrow in the, uh, in the soil. Okay, let's take a quick look at the different groups, just some important features. So the anurans, um, very unique characteristics. Um, so certainly the locomotion is uh, peculiar, they hop. So they have very strong uh, hind limb muscles. The 
the eyes tend to be uh, rather bulging. They do not have a tail. And that's where um, the name comes from, means tailless. Uh, they have webbed feet, no claws, moist skin. Uh, the skin has glands that produce uh, toxins or poisons, uh, some more poisonous than others. Okay, hold on. Oops. Let's see what other features I wanted to. Oh, they also, we've seen this when we dissected the frog, but they have an external eardrum, uh, which is technically called the tympanic membrane. Of course, our tympanic membrane is uh, deeper within the ear. Okay, a couple of other features here for this group, so we'll go to number seven. The adults, it's all about feeding. Uh, the adults feed on insects and they uh, procure those insects by um, protruding their tongue uh, very rapidly and, and the end of the tongue is rather sticky and they grab an insect out of the air, pull it back into its mouth. Kind of cool. <laughs> okay, reproduction. Uh, the only feature I want to mention here um, is the vocalizations by males. Uh, certainly, a lot of you have heard uh, frogs um, calling out uh, during the spring um, and that they're looking for mates. Uh, normally, frogs don't have a lot to say except for when they're breeding. Okay, let's take a quick look at the other two groups. So, the salamanders and newts. Rotula, and these are salamanders, newts. The frogs make up easily 90% of all the species of amphibians, living species. Um, the other two groups I'm going to talk about are much um, reduced in number. Uh, the salamanders are kind of interesting. They do have uh, tails. They move uh, in kind of a side to side uh, motion uh, using their limbs. Their body is long and slender. Some do not have lungs. They use actually their skin and the lining of the mouth uh, to exchange oxygen. These guys eat insects. Some are more adapted toward water. Some are maybe a little bit more adapted toward um, land, uh, but in certain uh, parts of the world, these guys are very important to the ecosystems. So in North America, the uh, eastern uh, forests, and probably best exemplified by the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, 
There are many species of salamanders you can find in the national park. And the salamanders, because they eat insects, they can make a big impact on uh, the forest and the soil. So they're really, really important to the uh, forest ecosystem in, in that part of the country. Okay, one last group, and that these are uh, probably guys that you've not heard of at all, but I'll just mention them briefly. Uh, these are the Sicilians. They are legless. Uh, they're mostly blind. Most of them live in burrows in the soil. Some in South America, I believe, live in uh, freshwater ponds and streams. I'm not sure we have any in uh, North America. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to talk about uh, regarding the amphibians. Uh, the next group that I'll touch on are the reptiles.